Hey guys, what's up? So, there has been many great fan translations over the past 20 years of RPGs that never came out of Japan, such as some of the Tales of games, the Fire Emblem games, Valkyria Chronicles 3 on the PSP, and, well, most notably nowadays with the popular Legend of Heroes saga, the Crossbell arc on the PSP, both games. But today, I want to show you five hidden JRPG gems that are fan translated and that you may not know about. So, let's check them out! Number 5. Nayuta Endless Trails also known as Nayuta no Kiseki. I mentioned the Legend of Heroes games on the PSP at the beginning of this video. Nayuta is yet another RPG released for that system by Falcom that never came out of Japan. This doesn't exactly belong to the series because it doesn't have the name, but it's still a Kiseki title, or rather a Trails title? Anyway, you could consider this as a spin-off actually, as it doesn't seem connected at all to them. It's an action RPG with the same graphic engine used for East 7. And speaking of East, it plays very similar to that series, just not as fast-paced. You control Nayuta, a kid who wants to be an astronomer one day. He lives on an island surrounded by a vast ocean and wants so badly to know what's beyond it. There's also an interaction with the Phantom World that plays a major role in the game. So it's up to Nayuta and his newly found companion, the fairy Noi, to solve the mysteries of the world. Overall, this is a pretty fun action RPG with some really unique perks to it. The game was probably never localized because of its lack of ties with the other Trails titles, and back then, all of them were mostly hidden gems than anything. Therefore, it probably wouldn't have sold very well in the West. Number 4. Grand Knight's History Moving on to another game on the PSP, this one released in 2011. It's a turn-based RPG developed by Vanillaware. You play in a campaign run by mercenaries in a worldwide conflict between three nations. The goal is to align your party with one of them, taking part on several different missions. So it's mostly a quest-driven adventure with beautiful art style and a journey full of strategic exploration. The battle system takes place with your customized characters in one side of the screen against the enemies in the other. It's pretty engaging, slightly hard to get into, but nothing you can't overcome eventually. This RPG was a commercial success in Japan and even had an online multiplayer mode. Exceed and Rising Star games were going to localize it at first, but back then, there were way too many projects to work on and not exactly a big budget to cover them all. It is a very fun game and highly unique. In fact, Tomohiko Deguchi, the director of the game, will resign from Vanillaware, going on to create a spiritual successor called Grand Kingdom on the PS4 and PS Vita. Give Grind Knight's history a chance, if it looks like your type of game, as it is definitely worth it. Number 3. Treasure of the Root Dress Another turn-based RPG and the last one developed by Squaresoft for the Super Famicom. This was back in 1996 though, when the PlayStation was already out and the Nintendo 64 was just around the corner. I guess they didn't see much point in localizing a game that looked like a Final Fantasy VI clone. Big mistake though, as it is a fantastic game. And no, it doesn't exactly play like Final Fantasy. In fact, I believe it's more of a saga-like game. I say this because you get to choose between three different characters, each with their own story, party members and journey. It all revolves around the end of humanity taking place in 15 days since the game starts. Actually, you can switch back and forth between these three protagonists whenever you load a file or you can just focus on one until it's over and move to the next one. There's also a fourth character unlocked by finishing the first three routes. Treasure of the Root Dress is all about the Mantras, a very fun magic system where you can randomly create your own spells and name them however you want. 
battles are played in turns, side by side, most of them occurring in dungeons or in the overall map. Encounter rate is high here, so be sure to be prepared for a long and arduous adventure of constant interruptions. In the end, this is a very solid game that I can't believe it didn't make it to the West, as it is just as good as some of the classics of that era. Number 2. Tear Ring Saga In the late 80s, Fire Emblem was conceived by game designer Shoso Kaga. He will go on to work on every entry in the series until his fallout with Nintendo in 1999. He still wanted to create Fire Emblem titles, but obviously he had lost the rights of the name. Instead, he moved on to the PlayStation with his own company Tiernanog and created Emblem Saga. Nintendo filed a lawsuit because of the title and gameplay similarities, so the name was changed to Tearing Saga. This whole fiasco prevented the game from being localized, even though it was a commercial success in Japan. You could say it's a Fire Emblem clone, but since it was developed by the creator of the series, it's more like a spiritual successor. Graphically speaking, it looks different than Fire Emblem, but gameplay-wise, it plays exactly the same. Still grid-based, with both short and long maps, and the usual triangle attack system. In Tear Ring Saga you take control of two different protagonists, each with their own army and missions. Eventually, they intertwine to become one and the same. And let me say this right away. This is one of the hardest video games I have ever played. Almost at Thracia 776 level. Oh yeah! The RNG is not as unbalanced here, but the map design can be quite disastrous full of really tough enemies sometimes. Still, if you're into grid-based tactical RPGs or most likely into Fire Emblem, this is a game you just cannot miss. Hard or not, it's still an excellent game. Number 1. Namco Cross Capcom Exclusive to the PlayStation 2 and developed by Monolith Soft. That's right, the same people behind Xenoblade Chronicles. It is the first game in this crossover series, predating the Project Cross Zone games and the first time Namco and Capcom collaborated. A massive amount of characters from all different games from both companies are playable here. From the guys of Tales of Destiny and Street Fighter Alpha to even characters like Klonoa or Regina from Dino Crisis. Most of them will be paired up, while others will go solo. The maps are somewhat small, with a long roster of enemies all around them. However, instead of your usual battle screens, you'll get to play these overly addictive minigames. To attack, you'll need to select the combos assigned to the circle button and the D-pad. They're all in order, so there's zero issues getting them right every time. To defend, you'll use the D-pad alone, but you have to click it at the right time to reduce the damage. Man, this is a very long game, more than 50 hours, mainly because the maps can take forever, between 1 and 2 hours each. But since I absolutely love the genre as well as the battle mechanics here, I was very much alright with that. It also helps that I am quite familiar with some characters here, especially since some of the most memorable music themes from the games they belong to play every time it's their turn to move and attack. Most of them rearranged by legendary composer Yusuke Koshiro. I love this game to pieces, man, and it's a shame they didn't localize it, because I seriously have no idea why. Thankfully, this fan translation exists, although I gotta say it's really bad, full of grammar and nonsensical mistakes. Since it's not exactly a game you play for the story, as long as it's understandable, you'll be fine. Namco Cross Capcom, a criminally underrated game on the PlayStation 2. those were my five picks for today's video, I know there are more, I just need to play them, right? And when I do, don't worry, I can guarantee I'll be back probably with a part two, maybe someday. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!